Hey. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, small yard, small yard, big garden. <laughs> small yard, big garden. <laughs> small yard, urban homestead, big garden. Something like Something. that. <laughs> Close enough. This is going back to the garden tour. I'm going to pan around because in case anybody didn't see the beginning part of the garden tour. We went over the asparagus, the spaghetti squash, tomato plants. The asparagus is doing really well in a very big bed. Um, you can see the asparagus ferns coming out. You have to let them grow the first year and not pull them. Pomegranate. This is just a quick recap of what we already did. The peas here, Roland just harvested a bunch, and he and Nisea are now eating them because um, there was a bunch of peas on here. And then we have tomatoes coming in. The peas are going to get ready to be pulled here shortly. We have an egg in an unlikely location. <laughs> Good peas, huh, Nisea? Um, we have the baby chicks learning their little pen we have them so they can get used to the bigger chicks and then as they get a little bit bigger we're going to incorporate them now we have beak bumpers to protect them so if we have to use them we will otherwise we hope the chickens these um female hands here <laughs> are used to the chickens at some point and they don't bother them and they don't turn cannibalistic right again <laughs> Okay, rhubarb here, peas here still, tomatoes also in this bed, some carrots. They're not doing like super great, but they're okay. Um, this is what's left over from the greenhouse here and here and here. And obviously I'm not getting all these in the ground. I'm still getting some eggplants that I'm going to put in the ground. And some of these tomatoes, I have one more spot. I'm going to add some tomatoes. And then I'm going to try to get some more peppers in the ground that are doing really well. And that's just because they're like Jaloki Red, Ghost Peppers, and um, Shishito Peppers. And I don't want to like just give those away. But I think I'm going to have a tomato giveaway here soon. Now these may look small, but once you, once get, you them, get them planted, they grow fast yeah and they I do some of ours. I do have a summer squash right there that's growing um, rogue it's on its own it needs a it needs a home um, okay so and like I said a lot has changed there's this big monstrosity in the way <laughs> that the kids can have fun in and play and swim and then we have that big monstrosity that was the trampoline and is now a trellis Let's start over here again. Oregano is still doing good. The figs are taking off like crazy. We have all these little grasshoppers destroying foliage with little holes. You can see that. Roland's our bug catcher. Got away. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stripey here doing well with tomato. Uh, not tomatoes. It is flowering. Um, I'm not bothering it to pollinate just yet because... I want it to grow a little bigger. You can see the little flowers. This bed, I pulled all the radishes because they were bolting. And I have left the carrots. So hopefully those will do well. It's a little shadier, so maybe. Yeah. Hopefully. It'll stay cooler here. This side is, funny enough, the warmer side of the bed. These eggplants are starting to do well. I have some weird leaf things that were happening. But since those, these have come in. So it's improved. I did put wood chips on here also. Wood chips, mulch helps keep uh, your soil moist. So if you can use it, use it. We have, and I have sunflowers everywhere. Look, I'm standing next to a sunflower. The nasturtium is doing well in this area. We pulled the trellis that was here. We're gonna use it in a different part and I'm gonna put more tomatoes. The kale is doing wonderful and so is our corn. Looks like these might be getting ready soon because they're going to dry off the top. Yep, these are going to be ready to pull here soon. Um, Technically I keep... they're edible, but we're going to be using them for seeds for next year because obviously these ones were doing amazing. Oh god, those are so many seed pods, it's crazy. We're going to have a lot of seed pods. We're going to have kale seeds if anybody needs any. I'd happily uh, get some out to you guys. Um, <laughs> so 
Sunflower. Sunflowers still growing in here. Lettuces that we've been harvesting and yeah. eating for salads. Lettuce here. Swiss kale. chard. Oh, that's Swiss chard. Yeah, oh, that one's Swiss chard. chard. Swiss chard. Kale. Kale. Then we got some more sunflowers, sunflowers here. Swiss chard. Some more Swiss chard. I don't know. Is this thyme? That's thyme. That's, that's time. garden thyme. But we also now have lemon thyme. And we have it. <laughs> lemon thyme. Okay. Weird cheesiness. <laughs> We also have a nice little black widow vine uh, web spreading out here, so we got to be careful. I tried to douse it and to no avail. It did black not widow work. Black webs don't can deal with water. Yep. So our strawberries, we've picked a bunch of strawberries. We've turned like some into tea. They're still going a little bit, but they're starting to slow down on production. Yeah, they're slowing down. There's still a bunch that still need to grow. And something keeps on like laying on it or something because probably a squirrel like i tell you i think the squirrel's back it hasn't made its full appearance yet but i have noticed damage that the squirrel would only do so i'm thinking the squirrel likes to lay in this area and i keep finding these things kind of plumped over so like if you'll notice it's just all of right here a little space normally it's clumped together yeah i think the squirrel likes to hang out in here there's also a cat. Oh, we were moving this mint into oh, yeah. our tea area. So this is all our veggie area. Look at these um, Kajari Whoa, Jeez, so I have trouble walking on a daily basis. This is why I don't wear high heels. These Kajari melons are getting ready to um, start vining up. So that's a beautiful sight to me. And I can't wait for that. We have this tomato, it's growing weird. Very weird. This is the next stem that should be popping up. And as, if you, as you can see, it's only a leaf. I don't understand that. Um, so I'm hoping this will pop up a stem out of here and it'll continue growing. Otherwise, this growth is gonna be severely stunted and I am gonna end up ripping this tomato out and putting something different. Um, <laughs> because if it's not gonna do what it's supposed to do, I don't know. Big tomato. Any big tomato. That was a big blossom on there too. We have still going. Oh, we have our chamomile in here. We forgot to cut them. We forgot. Oh no, I cut a bunch. Okay. So these are just, they haven't petaled out yet. So they are just barely in the process of getting their petals. And sunflowers. those sunflowers. Sunflowers. Corn? No, garlic. Oh. Don't pull that. That's a garlic. This is the last of the garlic that I have in the garden, actually. The very last. Um, the tomatoes are doing well, but they're kind of getting a little sh shade. Um, Put some more peas here. See, there's some tiny ones that aren't getting any sun, but because of the Brussels sprouts. You got a little more peas Yeah, here. a little more peas. We probably have more peas on this side, too. You have to get on that side to get to them, though. I'll check. Because, uh, yeah, I don't step on nothing. Well. We have tons of cabbage on this side that's growing really well. I can't tell from here if it's heading up. Do you see balls forming? I do. You see balls? I see one right here. That's Brussels sprouts. Oh, then never mind. But the one that you had your hand on the first time, yeah, that's uh, yeah, cabbage. This one has a little one that's like that big. Oh, cool. And this one right here by your leg is cabbage. Indeed. Yay! And then that one in the ground is cabbage. So looking forward to those. These are going to be big sunflowers. Maybe. Um, see how this is a purple stem right here? That's why I was wondering about those other ones. If those are some flowers. Um, we have more tomatoes. This whole bed is lined with tomatoes along this trellis that comes all the way up here. Careful standing there that you don't... Yeah. The vine is in between right here. What kind of vine? You're stepping on the cabbage. Oh, I almost stepped on the cabbage. You did step on the cabbage. You moved your yeah. foot. You got that leaf. <laughs> Um, right in between here. Okay. There, it, the vine is on the ground area. The tomatoes here are doing well. Tons of sunflowers still. This pak choy ended up bolting, so I didn't get to harvest it. But we'll let it turn to seed and see what happens. These beans are doing lovely. Um, in fact, this bean is doing really lovely. Look at that bush bean. We have more chamomile on this side. And another bush bean here. The sunflower, I think, is keeping it in the shade, so we'll have to see. We think this is our precious stevia. We're not quite sure yet. Our return. 
Yep, it does look like the stevia leaves. I tried one. It was a little sweet, but I'm not sure. The it's kind of hard to tell until they grew up a little more. Yeah, the beets are coming in. And I have beets on the other side too, so we'll see what happens with those. All the radishes, though, bolted. I pulled radishes out of everything. We didn't get more radishes, which is a shame. The pepper bed is doing wonderful. However, we had to... Improvise. Improvise <laughs> and create impalements methods. Because the dog... Was... Alice. Alice, well... We're working on stuff over here. We'll yeah. We'll show you more about that in a little bit. We're working over here. We come and over we here. Come over here to sit down for a second. And Alice and is laying right there. Just plopped right down in the middle. Yep, on the peppers and everything. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so... Hopefully she didn't damage too much. Um, the okra also is coming in. You can see I put wood chips. God, I cannot walk. Um, I put wood chips down all over to keep the moisture here. And this way, this kind of, the brick wall keeps this bed super hot. So this kind of keeps the roots cool, but allows the heat to benefit the plants. Kind of like making a pizza, but with like tin foil. Yes, tin foil. It's right down on it. Um, the okra is coming in really well and I put some peppers in between the okra and I can still put a little more maybe if I have space. I don't know. Well, it's kind of crowded, but peppers like partners and peppers like okra. So we'll see what happens. Oh, the lemon plant has been upgraded to a bigger container and is Yellow. happily putting out little baby leaves. Isn't that gorgeous? So hopefully that will do what it's supposed to do. Did you talk about the kachara melons? I did. They're growing up on vines. Um, peppers, more over here. Got to move this. I'm going to end up moving this zucchini because this is where I'm going to put another trellis for more tomatoes. Indeed. Because I just need more tomatoes. <laughs> but um, so we're going to probably move this a little more centralized and put the posts, and this way they can grow up happily. We have wonderful wonderful cauliflower pants that aren't putting out cauliflower heads kind of just leaves just leaves and so i was like god i hope i didn't put napa cabbage in here bed. <laughs> but i don't know <laughs> no cabbage big leaves i mean not no cauliflower but big leaves i really hope this is not napa cabbage i don't yeah, think so I'm but i can't find a tag any, uh, cauliflower right. huh no uh, more tomatoes. You can tell which ones get more sun. These are bigger. Those are smaller. Um, I also have more tomatoes back here. And then, of course, Return of the Sunflower. Return of the Sunflower. I also have lettuce in there. We have a new... Wait, let's do the new stuff last. Okay, okay. new stuff last. Sorry, I get excited. <laughs> sunflowers. Lots of sunflowers and nasturtium. This little kale right there at the bottom, the curly leaf kale. So this is where I think the squirrel... Uh, squirrel's been hanging out the most because the stems got snapped on it. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So there's the evidence. The funny enough, carrots are still doing well in this bed. These sunflowers are coming in. I accidentally killed a sunflower because we moved the rock so over it here. It was like right here, and it was already really lopsided. Yeah. So we figured we just move it to right there. And it turns out that the roots were just growing on the top. Yeah. Because right, so. there was a rock in the way. Yeah, so that didn't work. Um, we also have the beans coming in through the back. We still have like seven peaches growing. Let's talk about the tea garden! Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, we had a big trampoline, of course. You guys have seen the pictures. It was a huge monster trampoline in this area. The poles got bent and broke. And it became more of a safety hazard than it was more of a, where the kids could hang out. And with the pole, yeah. With the pool we have the since we have the pool now we miss spend most of the time in there we don't like come and jump in the trampoline as much yeah so it was a uh, sacrifice but yeah i think it was worth it <laughs> it was worth it so, so we kind of we chopped it in half we put some rocks on the bottom and we have it trellised over and we're gonna have some plants coming over that we'll talk about the plants in just a moment we're gonna be building a fire pit here but we don't we don't know if we're gonna be uh, getting one online or if we're gonna be digging one yep but most likely it's probably going to be online, just in case we have to move it out of the way. And we built that bench yesterday. Yep. I think it looks pretty good. We should look at the bench up close. Yeah. Oh, as I walk this way. 
And you can see our vines by the bench. Covered we'll talk about this. Seed. We just put bird seed in the bird feeder because we moved the bird feeder. Look at this pretty bench. We stained it. This is the ends. It's a little mucky looking because we had plants on it and yeah, standing on it. Dirt. Trying to anchor the uh, chicken wire onto the trampoline because this is going to be our support for our vines. And then it's a good height to sit on. Right? Yeah, it's not too not too high and not too low. Yeah, we have two more that we gotta build, right? Benches? Two more benches. So two more smaller, benches. like half the size each and yeah. put on each side. Um, and then we'll have the little fire thing out here. So we'll have a little center where one we can read, two we can do D and D gaming. Yeah. We're gonna put a table right here also. The plants? Can we talk about the plants? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to back up because the hibiscus is back here. Now, we already have chamomile in the garden, um, which we can use for tea, and I love that. I was already growing echinacea, and I already had mint. But when we did this, I was like, what do we want to put in this area, really? Do I want to put more vegetables, which we have a lot of? Um, should I put more tomatoes, <laughs> which we have a lot of? But no, I wanted it to be a purposeful bed of growth that we could utilize in a different way. So, Roland and I love tea. Yes. We ordered tea from Old Since Barrel. Recently. What is it called? Old Barrel Tea Company. Yeah. I hope I didn't not chop that up. Um, we love their tea. Old Town Company. It might have just been a bit. It's an old town, but it's the Old Tea, tea, tea Old Barrel. barrel. Tea, tea Barrel. Tea Barrel. Old tea, <laughs> old tea barrel. Outtakes. <laughs> something with barrel and something with tea. Go try their tea. It's good. <laughs> it's great. It's amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we wanted to, um, like I got it in my, like, cause I just ding, 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 get ideas. And I'm like, we need our own tea garden because we need to experiment with teas and growing things um, that will provide us our own homegrown tea. And not only that, but I believe like herbs and stuff um, are good for healing and promoting good health. So the more you're getting from your own yard, and by the way, this is, we don't use chemicals in here. We use neem oil to treat pests. Yeah, we try not to do that so that way. We're not poisoning ourselves. Yeah. Um, I, I've gone away from like miracle Grow. I've gone yeah. away from chemical fertilizers. I use fish emulsion for fertilizer or bunny poo. Um, we're using now bunny and chicken in yeah, our compost. compost. Because normally you can't use chicken poop yep. unless you uh, burn it down to get all the, the pests inside of it. Ow. And since we've, we've got that now, it's, we're slowly making our way through it. And we're going to be able to place that through soon, but it's kind of going slow right now just because it's brand new. Yeah, I think it's uh, a batch should be ready this week. In fact, tomorrow. Um, i got to turn it and make sure. But... With that being said, we're using all natural stuff, right? I take chicken kitchen scraps and put it in the compost. I put eggshells in the compost. We got our calcium, banana peels for our potassium. So we have a, some good stuff in the bin going on. Um, but it's all natural. And so since we're doing so much so natural, um, we don't have chemicals in anything that we grow and for tea. Get, like, these ladybugs. Yeah, the ladybugs are all over the place because they're eating the bad bugs. If you set up a good ecosystem for bugs, you are going to get bad bugs, but you're also going to get good bugs that take care of the bad bugs, and that's kind of nature's balance, you know? One feeds the other. So there's one of the other ladybugs. And these things are everywhere. And they're everywhere. Like, you'd be surprised. Some people find maybe one or two. We can go just look around, and we'll find them. And there's like, ladybugs everywhere. There's... A baby right here, which means they're reproducing, which yeah. means they like the amount of water they get here. They like the amount of plants they get here. They like food. our garden. They like our garden. Yay. <laughs> so, okay. So everything is natural in here. Um, you know, we feed our chickens natural food. They eat the alfalfa. We're not feeding them chemicals, no antibiotics, no weird stuff. So none of that goes into our garden. 
which is a good thing, which makes tea a beneficial thing also because we can just pluck from there and like I feel pretty comfortable minus bug issue like if you have little bugs on things I feel pretty comfortable. I mean, as long as you wash it, you're pretty much fine. I know but I've I'm comfortable like I've picked up a leaf off the kale and I've just sat out here munching on it I just check it for bugs um you know practice your protein <laughs> why not they eat it in other countries <laughs> and some people eat it here you know grasshoppers whatever I'm not eating grasshoppers I don't care what anybody says <laughs> but all this is natural so we can just pluck and eat from this area which is a beautiful thing because I don't worry about the kids getting sick from something in the garden I don't worry about um, like feeding them something that's gonna make them sick uh, so we take advantage of that and why not a tea garden basically so firstly i mean at first didn't we have a hibiscus plant we had a hibiscus like somewhere over there, Who's there? Come on. Come on. but it ended up dying back because it got mowed down and blah 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 and just destroyed Dead. yeah so so we got a new one this one's supposed to get really big and it has the really big flowers yep and they expand i can't drink hibiscus tea mainly because i have a my normal bread my normal blood pressure is low, yep. and this lowers it even more. So, I mean, if you have high blood pressure, hibiscus is the way to go. Yeah. Because it lowers it quite a bit. Oh, gosh, it yeah. it tastes amazing. You can if, have it ice or warm. If you feel any hypertension in your body, um, hibiscus is the way to go. Any swelling, edema, anything like that, um, anything where your blood pressure is shooting up, you need hibiscus tea. Yeah. I'm an advocate for that. It down quite a bit. Yeah. Better than oatmeal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty rapid too like within what 10 minutes yeah if that like even if it's 10 minutes poor rolling man <laughs> yeah i used to drink this all the time but because i have low blood pressure it just continued bringing it down and down and he'd, <laughs> he'd have like some low blood pressure episodes that yeah, were kind of scary <laughs> so we knew we know now he can't eat beets and he can't eat hibiscus Sadly. he can't drink hibiscus um let's see we have dill and fennel that we added but not so much for tea although the fennel can be added in tea it gives it a licorice flavor it's more of like a meat thing though isn't it huh it's a meat, meat? For, isn't it mostly for meat fennel yeah yeah you can use it for cooking dishes greek dishes um lots of different dishes um utilize fennel but it does taste like licorice and this is where that can be crossed between food and tea the dill we're going to be pickling a lot of stuff i'd rather have fresh dill on hand than buy dried dill um let's see here we have the in your eye <laughs> that's the actual name it's literal name is in your eye we were actually at first looking for dog roses mm -hmm. and those are really wild and they're more native to europe so they're not really the most common plant but we have we got this instead and it's called the in your eye and they're really pretty they start off as like this really light pink like this this is a newer one then they transform into more of this yellow that's the newer oh this is the newer yeah and then it goes to the light pink yeah and then it comes to this dark pink uh-huh so it has these really pretty color pretty colors and they smell amazing but also they can be used in tea as well you can use the leaves for what does it really taste like i don't think we've done anything with these yet so i did really pick some i picked those ones that had bloomed in a straight line so it said they smell uh, divine. They're like they smell delicious. It says its fragrance is moderate, fru fruity with a spice. Yeah, fruity and a spice. So pretty cool on that aspect because it yeah. does. It totally does. It's fruity and spicy at the same time. Um, when to harvest? So like that peach blossom that's in the back, the yellowish peach. Oh, this one. Uh huh. <clears throat> that would be harvested this morning, but it's a little late later in the morning is when you would harvest it like around 10 11 o'clock when the dew has dried up on it because if you harvest it with that dew it'll mold the rose and so you can't use it in the tea because then you'll be drinking mold That's <laughs> so we can't wait for this to bush out and like yeah, in, we're, for this. we're gonna try to train it up the chalice but we're not quite sure how well it's gonna work but yeah if, if we can get it be really pretty. to go like this that would be great but we did get vines, so. Yes, we do have the vines. So we, we'll that soon. Yep. Okay, we have lemon balm already growing, and that's also utilized for tea, uh, for um, tea, but also for remedy, for home remedies, for coughs and congestion. 
Um, we technically we made tea with them. Yeah, we have but made... it doesn't make a whole lot of tea. It's more of like you take a couple spoonfuls and it helps with your throat. Yeah. Well, so you blend it with honey and yeah. you make like a syrup. And it's honey, water, and the lemon balm tea. Um, and then... Uh, you do the honey and it becomes a syrup and you take a spoonful of the syrup and that's what helps with the cough and that's what works okay we have more lemon <laughs> oh yes more lemon balm lots of lemon balm yeah and then we have chocolate mint we had chocolate mint at one point but we had it really in the shade so it wasn't doing very well and it ended up dying off a couple of years ago but we saw this when we went to one of the nurseries and we figured it might as well since it can be used in plants and it has a the fragrance it's basically it's like mint with a tad of chocolate because chocolate mint uh it's really we haven't tried it in tea but we're, we're going to be pretty sure that it's going to smell really nice we kind of excited for it and i i don't know about you but i'm totally excited for it i cannot wait because like chocolate and mint how can yeah, you go exactly. wrong and these chocolate mints those exactly. are delicious so that's going to be a like a sweet yummy chocolate addition milk. we have over here we have echinacea. echinacea and we have a couple of those we have like two or three of them don't we yeah this one's like in a bundle and we're trying to get it to grow out whatever grows will grows. be great yeah so we'll see what happens what's in the back corner I'm going to move the honeysuckle here real quick. Thank you. Move the tag. Oh, this one didn't have a tag because it came from Alameda. Yeah. So that's it's the like, hyssop. It's, uh, I'm not even going to try to say that. Hyssop. Hiss. <laughs> Hiss and up. Hiss up. Um, this one's really pretty because it has like coral little leaves. And then it has purple leaves. And Red. smell it, Roland, and tell them I what it is. I can smell it from here. Oh, I know. So can I. <laughs> It's got like a slight mint to it with a tad of like fruitiness. Doesn't it smell great? It smells amazing. Like I can smell it from here, but once you get like like really close to it, it's really overwhelming. <laughs> I but love it. It's going to be amazing in tea. This one I'm super excited about because... This is lime mint. Lime mint. Which will be a really cool thing to add with the lemon balm and the lemongrass. Yep. We're which excited will, about be that. It'll a super lemony thing, which can be really once again good for coughs mm -hmm. and you can actually do like a combination of like the lemon peppermint with chamomile for a nice soothing drink at night um lime like lime and lemon lemon balm lime um we also have oh pepper i'm gonna fall over we have the peppermint the general peppermint here and that is doing really well in that pot. Didn't so I, you grow this from a seedling? Um, it was small. It was a small little yeah. bunch of peppermint. And we've harvested already from this. Even the tea that I made the other day, we harvested from it. We've used a lot of this. Yeah. So that's going to be great. Because um, peppermint can be included in a bunch of different things. Rose tea with peppermint. Hibiscus with peppermint. Um, you can use just about peppermint in just about anything. Yep. Peppermint. It, gives like a, it helps with like congestion mm -hmm. it helps you be able to breathe like if you ever smell like a candy cane and it just clears up your mouth or your runny nose. nose yep and just it helps a lot that's why peppermint can just be added about anything plus it's really tasty mm -hmm. so you can't go wrong with that how was that tea i made oh the tea that uh the tea that we made uh -huh. it was really good it was lemony it was more of a warm tea uh -huh. so it was more calming mm -hmm. and uh it was really good and it was only just a couple things we dried some strawberries we dried some we had some peppermint in it right mm -hmm. what else did we have in the it? strawberry leaves oh well, yeah i said strawberry yeah but the fruit and the leaves yeah you can use both uh, fruit and leaves for yeah. strawberry too. and then uh marigolds oh we used marigolds oh i forgot about those yeah well it was a little bit of spice to it but that's that's because uh due to the peppermint and the marigolds yeah so. but it was really tasty it reminded him of a tea that we like when we have sore throats, huh? Yeah. Oh. Throat coat. Throat coat. That's what it is. Yeah. It has the taste of throat coat, but unfortunately it doesn't have the benefits. But throat coat is really good because um, you don't have to sweeten it as much. Yeah. It's just, it's super overwhelming, but it's really good. So here's going to be the cool thing. This next little plant is an Agastache hyssop. And with the Agastache hyssop, it tastes like licorice also. Yeah. So that throat coat, like with the strawberry and the peppermint, like yeah. the marigold, 
-hmm. with that particular plant we'll probably give it the throat soothing effect. it'll probably give it the throat because throat coat has licorice in it funny enough um so that's what that one is and it's, it has purple or reddish leaves i guess it hasn't flowered yet i do need to look up how to harvest the hyssop because we already have flowers on this one and if it's the flowers i need uh, i need to start plucking i'm not sure or if they need to dry um, but i will look into that this corner one smells better than it does in any perfume ever <laughs> i wouldn't know so <laughs> i cannot stand the smell of perfumes that have this scent in it funny enough and it is lemon verbena. I don't like lotions with this scent. It's like overpowering. It like totally destroys my senses. I will get like, I just, woo, it's overwhelming. This, however, does not smell oversaturated. It smells it beautiful. Good. Yeah. It's not like overwhelming. It's so like, and so this is supposed to get real bushy. You prune it and it bushes out more. It's kind of like a pepper plant. I don't know if that's FedEx out there. Hopefully not. But um, so it's kind of like a pepper plant. Like if you prune it on the top, it bushes out more, and the more you prune it, the bigger it gets. So I'm really looking forward to that. It, it looks pretty small, but if you take where it's grown, careful with the hiss up in the back. It's actually really big. Yeah, this is a big plant already. It kind of just folded over due to its weight. But this is actually a really big plant, and it's probably only going to get bigger. Yeah. And I was curious if it um, was a vine because of the way it was growing. So I had to research that. But no, it's it's a bush. Like, I just barely touched it, and it, the smell is all over my hands. <laughs> I love it. It's funny. I love it here, but I don't love it in perfume. What do we have here? We have purple cone flowers. Yep. Which is also... Look under the little abbreviation thingy. Um, Echinacea. Oh, <laughs> I was reading that part. <laughs> so these purple cone flowers are also the echinacea, um, but these are a little further along. We went ahead and bought bigger plants in case those ones in the little container don't do well. And that's okay. So on we go. To the next one. I love this next one next one that's also oh, that's yeah awesome. yeah i'm sorry these both are echinacea plants on both ah. these two but this next we one right here yep i am so excited about lemongrass because it, uh, it, it gets rid of uh, flies mm -hmm. it? the scent of it gets rid of flies um but also it's great in thai food so like the tom ka soups have lemongrass in it so i'm excited about that also um, you can use it in teas. So it has dual purpose, herbs and tea. Yay! This, these two. These ones, the sweet aroma. I'm going to sit for a second because I'm going to... Oh! So we have... And most, all these are perennials. You just have to like uh, mulch over them. Um, but a sweet romance, and this is a lavender. They both are? Uh huh. I thought it was just this one. Was the... I think they're two different ones, yeah, is the I'm thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a different one compared to this one. Yeah. But this one didn't come with a tag. No. One, um, some of them that we got from Alameda didn't have tags, but some of them that we got from like Home Depot had we do, tags. We on. do know that they're both uh, lavenders. Yeah. Oh, and Osuna. Got some from Osuna. Yeah. They don't usually carry the tags. Yeah. And lavender is good for like sleep remedy. It's good for. We've never really grown lavender because they get really hard to grow.